the, the image is so strong and, and the stage you know there's, there's a lot of demands on stage for you guys you're always you know it's 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 a very very intense show that you guys do do put on and you do work really hard at it do you feel like there's a bit of a kind of a, a, a sort of a demand on you guys to to because obviously the image is so strong with with what you do and the yeah. brand the brand of the band so to speak do you feel like there's a kind of expectation to to you know to almost kill yourselves on stage every night and really put Definitely. that energy I think, in i think i think i think that should be that same uh, expectation on everybody like yeah i mean you know people pay a lot of money to go and see a gig like it's expensive yeah and, it is uh yeah and, and i kind of I, I just can't stand it when like this is always something that i hated is when you know pay to go and see a band and, and they just stand on stage and act like they don't give a fucking flying fuck that you're yeah, there yeah like you know if, if i go and see somebody i want them to to give me the respect of actually giving me a performance like you know you wouldn't go and see a theater show and the actors are just apathetically standing around with their hands in their pockets staring down at their yeah, shoes, which is yeah. which is what so many you know indie bands do yeah totally man. um that that like uh that i just i kind of see it as a as a, as a matter of respect really for your audience like you know people are people have come to see you like yeah you deserve to show them some damned respect you know absolutely man that's just, it's good to it's good to hear i think because like i say i think for, for you guys particularly because there's, there's there's so much there's such a brand around what you do and you've kind of created a uh, you know a, a real solid brand around it that, that it's nice to hear mm -hmm. that, you, that you've got the, the the sort of the fans and the listeners in mind when you when you go out there because you yeah know, well, that's yeah, yeah, it's it's quite an interesting it's quite an interesting uh, sort of project you've managed to create, and obviously with the with, with the record you know coming out west of Eden and stuff. How do you feel about about that in itself? Because you've had a quite a you've had quite a chaotic few years and stuff. Obviously, you you know you've you've been doing shows, you've been you've been uh, hailed as you know loads of people have been you know getting behind you, which is awesome in itself. But uh, yeah, it's been been quite an intense few years, and lots of stuff has happened. So, how do you feel about the record? How do you feel about, you know, as a whole? Uh, how's the band feeling about it, and, and what does it mean to you now? Well, it's been a really intense few years, and in that time, because we've um, released so much music without having released an album. Yeah. This almost really feels like our second album, and there's probably two albums worth of material on it. It's quite a long album. Yeah. And half of what we've you know well in fact the majority of what we've released isn't on it so really you know taking uh all the singles and the ep that we released together yeah as one album this this kind of feels like our second album yeah yeah um and or well, certainly it feels like two albums yeah. worth of work and two albums worth of struggle um so it's so in that sense it's quite a peculiar situation that we find ourselves in yeah um and especially when we come to write the next album, I think that all the difficulties that most bands usually have writing a second one, we've already had. Yeah. Um, so I think we feel pretty comfortable about writing writing the next one. Yeah. Because it's you know that'll be our third. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I think like I think it's definitely an exciting time. But like that that that's that's one of the things I was going to ask you next was like obviously what are the biggest challenges you face as a band because you've been through you know in terms of people criticizing your 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 brand people you know you've had the label interest and then all all mm. the stuff that have come with that. So what would you say now? As a, as a what I would call a successful band who is able to tour and who is able to to put out music, uh, what would you say the biggest challenges are for what for for, for you say, guys now? I'd say that the biggest challenge comes from um, the small attention spans that uh, music consumers yeah. have these days, and um, and trends last shorter and shorter and shorter. And, um, and I think that really is catering to people's attention spans. And as a result, there's this, in the 21st century, you have this really capricious form of hype. Yeah. Uh, which is very momentary and and very quick to be retracted yeah. as soon as a band becomes established. And it's this kind of, you, you see this cycle of bands becoming hyped and everybody loves them. And then as soon as they're established, and they've released a record or a couple of records. Yeah. They then don't. They just can't affect people in the same way because what people uh, seem to care about is 
whatever the flavor of the month is yeah yeah rather than really the quality of, of the thing itself and it's really hard to establish yourself in the long run i think the only way that you can do that is by recognizing the the capricious uh nature of hype and the audacity of hype yeah and to just um and to just focus on creating good art yeah and yeah. i think that's what we we'll, that's what we've tried to do with this record is because a lot of the hype that was originally around us has subsided um it's been in a sense quite liberating because we don't we no longer feel like a slave to trying to yeah. keep up that hype and that momentum we've just been able to focus on writing what we think is a really great piece of art which is timeless and which will last yeah um and so yeah so i think that's i think that's really the challenge is to, is is what a band does after the hype dies down because yeah. hype never lasts forever you look at any artist that's ever been hyped yeah eventually that's going to die and you've got to think what's going to take that place absolutely um, and you can't just rely on flash and glamour and um provocation and and pr stunts you've got to have something lasting something timeless absolutely and so what we've done with the album is try and create again a time a timeless piece of art a timeless album yeah yeah absolutely man that's it's a wonderful thing to to be able to say that in in this time i think they call it the attention economy and that's the yeah we're, that's we're, a, that's I haven't heard it put like that before, yeah. but that is, that is exactly what I'm referring to, just yeah. put a, a lot more eloquently, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, absolutely. It's, it's, it definitely, I mean, it's really good, because I actually had a conversation with um, Jason from Sleaford Mod said exactly the same thing. He was like, we're a, right. we, we were a hype band, and now we're not a hype band, so you have to come to terms with the fact that you're not a hype band anymore, and you're not going to have the same level of attention, you're not going to be asked to do the same tours for the same amount of money, so you have to learn to do it for the love of it you know what i mean so and, and, and yeah. then we, we learn to do it for the love of it and stuff and that's and that's you know that's it's interesting that you've kind of got to that point and stuff and 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 and, 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 and obviously you know i would say you're still successful a lot of other people would say you're still successful but you know at least you're not you know your ego isn't you know you're not you're not yeah. under any well, false pretenses which is i think i don't know i think you can definitely um it's, it's it's not a matter of success it's more a matter of that sense of uh like hype and successful like two very different things yeah to me. yeah um and a lot of bands that um are successful are successful um can what well, can be successful long after the hype's passed but you know they do so on the basis of the quality of what they produce and and the you know how good their their music is you know yeah absolutely man absolutely. and talking about some of the tracks like uh there's a couple i'm going to pick up on just to ask you uh, for the influences and ideas behind him first one was was, mm -hmm. was loaded and, and the, obviously you had a very sort of decadent video for that which was really really cool but then you you know that the track itself like it's just a fucking banger do you know what i mean uh, and like i wanted to I, I wanted to ask you first off for that we're going to talk about flaunt as well because i love the, the video and the animation for that but first off we, we've loaded uh, can you talk to me about the ideas behind that and the concept and the, the and the thought process behind creating that tune yeah sure um we uh the song's musically inspired by a lot by No Church in the Wild, okay. um, by Kanye West and uh, yeah. I think it's Frank Ocean, um, and also by Nine Inch Nails, um, who we were on tour with when we wrote it. Yeah. Um, and the song's basically about selling out. It's about yeah. um, it's about our whole experience with Sony Music, which I mean, yeah. some people are already familiar with. Yes. Uh, where basically we kind of ended up commodifying ourselves really and uh, turned ourselves into a product and um again kind of sold ourselves out artistically and then it's about refinding yourself after having done that and refinding your artistic voice um and basically yeah self rediscovery and it's about you know spiritual poverty and material wealth yeah um, yeah yeah that's good. It's a good, it's a it's a cool concept. And I think it works for, for a lot for, for for your story. You know what I mean? I think I think probably yeah. you know fat writing those songs and, and other people listening because I work a lot with young people and and um, and uh, right. we would put like Q and A's out for bands and stuff when we do interviews and and a couple of young people had seen it and 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 they'd been like ah oh, you know what what you know what does that track mean and, and i think it's really interesting to hear your perspective given that you'd been on the you know these massive tours and you toured with nin and you'd done that and then obviously you'd had the, the mm. sony experience but you're kind of fighting get against that you're kind of rallying against it and that's something that i think young people and emerging bands 
can be inspired by. Do you know what I mean? I think that yeah. you know, seeing someone of your level of, well, I'll use the, the, the term success again, but uh, seeing someone that's mm. reached your level say those things and, and talk about it and be comfortable in your own skin now that you've kind of, you know, fought back against what Zoni were trying to do to you. I think it's yeah. quite it's quite a motivational thing, which is which is really cool. Um, Cheers, yeah. yeah the, the, I, mean, I think largely it's about having the humility to admit when you've been wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and to admit when you fucked up, which yeah. is, it's a hard thing to do, to have that humility and to say, to put your hands up and say, yeah. Absolutely, um, man. We, we, we fucked up, we sold out. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it was quite, it felt quite cathartic being able to do so. Absolutely, man, absolutely. That's that's really cool. The, the, the second, because again, I'm going to talk about the visual, I'm, I'm, I, know, I know you get asked about it a lot, but I'm going to talk about the visual aspects of the band. Mm. So talk to me about Flaunt as well and what that meant to you. Cause Is that why, sorry? Yeah, yeah, just you sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, just, you sort of described it as quite a weird, like a weird sort of track for you guys, didn't you? So like, oh, yeah, can you talk to me yeah. about that? Uh, I mean, it's the only song where um, I'm not singing, yeah. um, which is already um, something interesting about it. Um, it's we we programmed the track uh, using a program from Japan called Vocaloid. Okay. Um, which is, um, if you're not familiar with it, no. it's what uh, is what they use in the Japanese music industry for virtual pop stars. Oh wow! Um, cool. So, for example, there's a, an artist called uh, Hatsune Miko. Okay. Um, and she's basically an artificial anthropomorph wow. big pop star. Okay. Uh, oh. Who's animated and uh, her voice is animated, and so we sort of got a cracked version of one of those programs uh, and wrote the song. Uh, using that, um, so you program in the melody and you program in the phonetics and like you know the vowels and the consonants of what you're saying the set at whatever point. And we wrote the song in Japanese. Holy shit! Um, that's well, weird. the verses are in Japanese, yeah, yeah. but the the chorus is in um, it's the chorus is just blabber basically. Yeah, yeah. It means nothing. It's kind of a weird, it's just um, loads of weird sounds. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of a very interesting yeah. thing to do, like a like a project, like an art project, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is we just don't want to be predictable. Yeah. Like, uh, a lot of the artists um, that we see doing well um, at the moment, um, it's very predictable what they're going to do. You can kind of always guess what the next track is going to sound like by looking back at what they've done already. Uh, and I think what we always want to do with every release is make it totally different to the next. Yeah. Like yeah. our goal as a band has always been to never write the same song twice. Yeah. And I think that if you listen to our discography, there's no two songs yeah. which are really alike. We've always written different songs. And uh, and I think that's probably one of the things that we're proudest of with this project is the fact that um, we have always, there's no two songs which are the same. Um, and we always try and do something different every time to keep the to keep the the fan base and the audience on its toes that they don't know what they can expect yeah absolutely man i think that that's one of the most interesting things i, I found about the band initially was just like you got like tunes that are like indie tunes like and then you, there's a little bit of mm. pop in there but then you've got like industrial tunes and like you know so so, yeah. so it's, it's, it's really it's a really interesting you know you've, you've definitely been able to create a sort of I'll, I'll call it like an art yeah i think i feel like it's more of an art project where your videos and everything kind of works together for itself and, and uh, two or three more questions now the first one is sure. the, is the you know what does the image mean to you now i know you probably because obviously it's got you in you know some people misunderstand it you know that's oh, i know i understand there was a lot of uh, miscommunication around the image in, in you know uh, a few years back and stuff but what what does the the image and the brand of, of, of mm. this band mean to you now in you know in 2020 uh what 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 uh, what you know because obviously some people use image as a as a you know like i say to some to something to um spark pr or something to spark whereas mm. and i think that's something that people assumed about you guys for a while but that seems to you know because it's more like as you guys is more like artists like visual artists that want to that want to yeah. that want to challenge people that want to you know push the boat out so to speak um rather than rather than a band that's just doing this shit for you know 
just just to get PR or do you know what I mean? It seems like yeah. you're more you're more kind of visual artist than rather rather than just musicians. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that, that's a really good question. Um, I think that um, when we first emerged, a lot of people saw our uh, androgyny and the way that we played with gender as being something that was commercially minded or yeah. uh, maybe motivated by again PR yeah. or uh, trying to again establish ourselves as a brand in a very cynical capitalist profit seeking way yeah. um, and I think that that largely came from the fact that we were signed to a major record label yes. uh, and thus understandably people had some kind of scepticism about how we presented ourselves especially because the majority of us are straight men um, yeah. but uh, but again I think that we've only ever presented our genuine selves um, profit's never been the motivation behind doing so I think the whole yeah. point of what we do is that we try and create worlds that people can step into and these worlds aren't monodimensional they're not just about the music they're not just about the songs um, they're about creating this entirely new and different imagined world that people can step into um and and their outfits are a part of that yeah and they're also an expression of our own personal identities we're not stepping into a performance it's it's performative without being a performance yeah totally man. um and again the image is just so crucial for for the kind of um act of world creation that we are trying to attempt through this project yeah, um, absolutely. And it's also just a, a crucial matter of expressing our, our our identities. Like we are flamboyant, and uh, and we want to show that you know you don't, as a man, you don't have to. Although I love football, um, yeah. you don't have <laughs> yeah. to. You don't have to. You don't have to just wear jeans and a t-shirt and go to a football match and drink beer. You can. There's there's a lot of other alternative versions of masculinity which are available, and, you, and that you need. To, you don't have to. Um, conform to the monolithic one, and I think that in that sense we've we've learned from queer methods. Yes. In order to project that message, rather than appropriating um, queer culture, or rather than uh, queer baiting, I think that we're, what we've tried to always do is learn from queer methods to try and put forward a a positive, ameliorative political project. You know? Yeah, absolutely, man. I think that's very succinct as well. That 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 is. That's a very succinct way of, of, of coming across and and um, you know yes. a, a, a sort of ex, as an extension of that um, the mission statement for you guys obviously like I say to create this world but can you talk to me about how the mission statement or your mission statement for the band has kind of developed through the beginnings of the band through having yeah. to change through having to change through being with Zoni until now you know until now you know your world you've what you wanted to create was probably skewered when you were with Zoni and then and now you've re sort of refound it again and, and you you know what you want to yeah, do and sure. create. But yeah, can you tell me a little bit about how how the mission statement has changed and developed over the years? I think that's yeah, it's a really good question as well. I, I think that um that our fir at first, when I look back, it's always easy, it's always hard to know what you're doing when you're doing it. And I think that there's a lot of things which you only ever understand in retrospect and in hindsight. And when I look back at um, when we started about three years ago, uh, maybe nearly four years ago now, um, a lot of the ideas that we had were there, but they were almost unarticulated, right? Yeah, um, or at least not articulated in a conscious way. They were there, um, but they came through what we did rather than being articulated through words or language. Yeah, and we didn't really understand fully what we were doing at the time but then when i look back on it i can see exactly what we were doing and i can see the things and the ideas that were underlying it yeah and i think that when we were with sony we basically started losing a lot of that um ethos and all of those ideas became very diluted um and very compromised um not because of the people that we were working with directly, because we actually had a great team of people around us, but just because of the kind of um, corporate powers that be and yes. the kind of bureaucratic machinery that we found ourselves in. And so, again, I think that we lost, we became alienated from 
our original message and ethos and ideas mm-hmm. and then after we split with Sony and we'd had some time to reflect on the whole situation um, it suddenly became very crystalline looking yeah. back at what it was that we'd originally been articulating and we could only see that by seeing its opposition we could only see it in relativity yeah. with its opposite which was the things that we were doing well um, towards the end of our time with Sony and so we kind of needed that opposition and that experience to be able to see what we were originally doing and then be able to articulate it into something a lot clearer Yeah. and so in that sense the whole experience of Sony has actually I think allowed us to develop this kind of self-awareness and self-consciousness uh, and this much clearer idea of exactly what it is that we're doing um, and I think that what that is is that it's something radical um, politically and creatively yeah. um, and it's something which is essentially focused on imagination and imagination as a political act yeah that's um, yeah and and I think that we needed to go through that Sony experience in order to be able to articulate that in the way that we can now. Absolutely, I, th- I think that's good. It's, so it shows a journey that you've been on, which I think a lot of people mm-hmm. can relate to. You know, you have to make mistakes to 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 learn and develop and become more complete. Definitely, people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Which is which is cool. Um, the, the last question I've got is because um, um, obviously we talked a bit about success and how you you know diff, you know you sort of define hype is very different to success but I wanted to ask you directly you know mm. what is it what does success mean to you because yeah, again a lot of people look at the, the tours you've been on you know working with you know working with labels but then also having your own creative freedom to me and to others that's like that's cool that's success but what is success mm. you know because we talked about hype earlier what does success mean to you uh, partly I'm that's a again a great question partly I'm doing this Partly, I think we're all doing this for ourselves, mm-hmm. and um, and from that perspective, success partly means simply creating something sincere. Nice. By which I mean manifesting yourself in the world by creating something that's other than yourself that's new and separate that didn't previously exist in the world but which manifests you and affirms your identity i.e something that expresses you yeah um and in order for that to have any meaning it has to be something sincere or authentic whatever those words mean yeah um but at another level i think that um we do want to mean something to people and when I look back at the uh, artists that galvanized me when I was younger and that really um, helped me live <laughs> um, through being a teenager, yeah, artists like uh, the Smiths and the Cure. Yeah, I mean, cool. obviously the classic examples. And yeah. I was, you know, those bands really helped me live when I was a teenager. And when I didn't have a lot of friends, yeah, those bands filled that void and made me who I am and I'd like to I'd like to mean that to people um, absolutely man and I'd like to basically be a band for outsiders um, and a band that can be a friend to people um, and a band that can mean something to people and that can help people through hard times um, in the same way that bands like The Cure and The Smiths were to me and even if it's just a handful of people um, that would be that would make everything worthwhile. So yeah, I want to mean something to people. Absolutely, man. Hey, that's uh, that's one hell of a way to end on. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's my idea. Of yeah. Success. Yeah. Thanks ever so much for the time, yeah. man. Like I'm really excited thank to come, you, to come see you guys. No, really appreciate, it, man. And enjoy the rest of your rest, okay? And and because uh, I'm cheers, I know you're going to be busy. That's a good interview. Uh, appreciate it. Cheers, man. No worries. Take care of yourself. All right. Take care, you buddy. Too. All right. Bye. Ciao, ciao.